guys today I'm gonna to be talking about a fun little build that I did and hopefully you guys saw hopefully that turned out well that whole shooting with the blowgun uh, thing I'm not sure how well that turned out because I was using plinking arrows which are not the most accurate but anyways uh, today I'm gonna to be talking about this fun build uh, of a blowgun and explaining how I built this one and how you can build one and then I want to talk about ammo selection and how I or what ammo I shoot out of my To the ammo gun. selection in different gear that I carry for the blowgun. Today I'll be talking about the actual blowgun that I'm using. So this one is built a little bit differently from a lot of other people's blowguns that I've seen online. This one is actually made out of a copper pipe. Here I can kind of show you here at this end. And this is actually made out of half inch copper pipe. And this stuff is really easy and reasonably cheap to get at places like Lowe's. And the reason why I chose copper pipe, the two primary things that you can use, at least buying from a hardware store over PVC, is one, the overall durability of copper pipe is a little bit better. Uh, and what I mean by this is PVC, especially in a larger length like this, has a tendency to crack instead of bending. And that's kind of what I like about uh, copper piping, is while it is easier to bend copper piping than it is to break uh, PVC, with copper pipe it's very difficult to actually break this whereas on pvc you can actually break the blowgun and that really sucks but overall when choosing a selection of material you'll just have to factor the how the ease of which uh, pvc breaks as opposed to its lightweight because the nice thing about pvc is it is extremely lightweight it probably weighs about half the weight of copper piping but once again, copper piping overall is more durable. Another reason I chose half inch is half inch is a pretty good size in my opinion as well. There's these little things that you can buy to put on the bottoms of chairs. They're like a little piece of plastic that goes over the end on a chair that contacts the ground to keep the uh, chair from scuffing up the ground or vice versa. And if you get half inch, you can buy these little rubber pieces. I don't have any to show here because I lost them all, but uh, you can actually buy those. And that's why mine has a little bit of exposed copper piping here is so that you can slide it on. And not only does that help convert your blowgun into a walking stick, but it'll also protect the crown of the uh, that is a gun. really nice thing to have and that's why I would recommend if you do end up making one of these try and make it in a half inch size so that you can put one of those on the end of the blowgun. So the other modification I made as you guys can probably see because this thing looks like a camo piece uh, is that I bought some camo tape and you can find camo tape at a lot of sporting goods stores. It's commonly used to wrap like shotguns or guns in camo and it's really super easy to apply uh, onto a blowgun, especially like a blowgun because they're not that complicated and there's not that many little spots that you have to get. Uh, but this is what mine looks like and uh, I think it turned out really well. I think this is using, yeah, this is using Advantage Max 4 HD as the camo pattern. It's not an extremely uh, loved camo pattern, I think, but I thought it looked really good at the time. This is quite an old blowgun. I think this thing is around five or six years old now, so it is quite an old uh, blowgun, but it is really good, and overall the camo tape has held up really well. But anyways, I would highly encourage that. And then on this end here, it's starting to come up a little bit, but I just wrapped this with electrical tape to give my uh, mouth just a little bit better of a hold on the actual piece of tape or on the actual piece of pipe. And those are two things, regardless to if you get PVC or if you go copper, I would highly encourage that. So that is pretty much the blowgun. There's not too much to it. Honestly, as far as any modifications to the actual pipe, I haven't done anything to it and I would not recommend doing anything to it either. Just for the fact that some people have added like lasers and sights, but honestly, lasers and sights, to really get the most out of them, you would have to have extremely strong lungs. I mean, at the range, you're likely going to be shooting a blowgun. Particularly large matter, you know, whether you can put a laser on the uh, target or not because like I said your lungs are probably not going to be strong enough to launch the dart at ranges in which lasers would become very useful 
Uh, so anyways, I don't do that. I just use, you know, instinctive shooting. And for me, so long as you get out and practice, you know, you have to know where your blowgun shoots, especially if it's a copper pipe one. Uh, you have to know where it shoots, but once you know where it shoots, really, in all honesty, it's not that hard to hunt with them. And really, uh, it's been my experience, it's harder to find, you know, good ammunition that shoots reliably as opposed to the actual blowgun. So I haven't made any other like sight modifications. As you guys can see, this is literally just a pipe with camo tape and electrical tape wrapped around now it. Now on to some ammo slash tools that I carry for the blowgun. So I'm gonna go over tools next because I really only carry one tool and that is this. This, in case you're wondering, is a spent 375 H&H &H shell. And the reason why I carry this is for jamming. Inevitably, it'll happen at some point, especially if you make your own blowgun ammo that you will hit a you know dart that you cannot shove like you just cannot produce enough pressure to shove that dart out so you will have a jammed round and so that's why I have this this uh, is a pretty heavy piece of brass and I chose the 375 H&H &H. you can choose something else too but I like the 375 H&H &H because it's a belted magnum which means that there's a little belt at the bottom of this and essentially it means that there's a lot of brass at the very bottom of this thing and so I just slide this into the barrel uh, this that uh, this side facing the dart and then I hit the dart out with this piece here so it's a little bit of a manual process but you'll find that if you don't have anything to unjam your blowgun uh, it pretty much means you're without the blowgun for the rest of your hunting time which really sucks so that's why I carry this small little piece of brass but it's very important to this particular uh, blowgun so that's the only piece I carry, and I would recommend carrying yeah, something inch, like uh, this piping like mine. Do keep in mind that is 50 cal, so you can't put anything larger than a 50 cal. Uh, it would have to be smaller, so that's why another reason I chose a 375 H&H &H All case. of these darts is this. I just buy these bamboo skewers. You can get them anywhere, really, and they're quite useful. These are 10 inch. I prefer the 12 inch more than the 10 inch, but you can get 10 or 12 inch. This is a, this one here is a 12 inch. Uh, both of these actually are 12 inches, uh, and these are some 10 inch ones. I personally like 12 inch because the quality on them seems to be a little bit better. They also tend to have a little less flex in their body, but these both are 10 inchers and they work okay. Uh, make hunting and plinking rounds is essentially the base, the bodies of all of these. Essentially, I get these skewers, you know, they already have tips on them. And then what I'll do is I'll take a knife and I'll essentially feather stick an area in here, but just in a circle and I won't take the feathers off. And then I use either, this is polyfill, but sometimes I also use cotton batting. Uh, either way, you know, just find something that you like. I prefer polyfill because it's a little bit more resistant to the elements as opposed to cotton, but either work and uh, that essentially makes the compression or the allows you to have the compression enough to blow it. And you do want to, you know, be very cautious with this stuff. Make sure that you get enough to get a proper, you know, seal. To, but you can also still push it out because if you make the seal too tight then you have to use one of these so that's what I do for making both rounds <clears throat> then what I, what I do hunting rounds like these it's very simple and I wanted to keep the entire thing very basic not just for you guys but for me is what I do is I'll take like soup cans and I'll take the tin and then I flatten it and then I cut it into these broadhead shapes so that they are not too large to fit in the 50 cal barrel because they still have to be small enough to fit in the barrel but I'll make broadheads that look like this or similar to this and then I'll take the same knife that I used to feather the back of this and just gently split uh, the top or the very tip of this and then insert the broadhead and then I usually use some like Elmer's glue something very simple once again it does not have to be like Gorilla Glue you can use that but like this is just Elmer's glue and you know it doesn't have to be super good because most of these darts are very expendable you know if you shoot it and you lose it 
you know, oh well, you know, you don't have much money invested in them. So that's how I essentially make those. I do want to note that with them, I generally will make up a batch of 50 plinking arrows and then I go out and test fire all 50 of them. And then I usually choose the top 10 of that 50 and those go on to be my hunting arrows. And I say this because a lot of these skewers, they're mass produced and they're made for actually like shish kebabs. So their quality for shooting is generally extremely lacking. So they're not, not all of them will be very accurate. Some will actually be bent. I don't think I have any bent ones here, but I've seen some that are like more in a U shape than in a straight shape. So some will be just seriously bent and those can still be really fun for plinking and like, you know, trick shots. But for serious hunting, that's how I kind of weed out the bad ones. Uh, is that I'll just shoot like in batches of 50 of them and then the 10 best of the 50 go on to actually be the hunting arrows. So that is how I make these darts. These are a little bit different from most of what you see and you can certainly buy commercial darts. I think they even have commercial darts for 50 caliber um, blow guns but you can do that. You definitely don't have to though and like I said I prefer to make my own I think it's a lot more fun and you get to really customize just like with a hand load and a rifle or a handgun you know you really get to customize and tweak this to your exact needs and so done properly these darts can actually be extremely effective anyways guys hopefully you've enjoyed that quick look at a fun little project of how to build a blow gun slash blow darts this can be a really cheap and fun method to hunt with it does require a lot of skill and patience and practice if this is a lot like a mixture between shooting a gun and a bow you have to do a lot of time practicing and really getting to know not just your gun like this but also the ammunition you shoot out of your gun and like I said you have to really know both of them in order to be an effective hunter with this and with blow darts it, you know you really have to be good because these things don't carry like any kinetic energy so when you hit something like a squirrel or a hare you have to really make sure that the shot placement is perfect because like I said these don't carry any kinetic energy at all really they carry barely enough energy to move them so you know you have to do a lot of practice in that way it's also really fun because you have to practice with your lungs and you have to have a lot of body control because you have to contract your lungs really fast but at the same time you still have to hold this entire barrel really steady so it's really fun and if nothing else this can be a really fun plinking project you know these make an excellent thing to go in the backyard and uh, you know shoot sometimes I love to try and like shoot at 70 yards and like lob them in as artillery just for the fun of it uh, but yeah they can be a really fun thing to just have around and shoot for the fun of it or if you want to go more serious survival you can actually you know make hunting arrows or buy hunting arrows or just experiment around with you know better hunting options and find really good technique and you know practice a lot and become actually a pretty good hunter with these things. So anyways guys hopefully you've enjoyed that video and don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe and I'm out.